Google Fonts is an amazing resource, and let's see how Font Pro can make using Google Fonts in our Rapweaver projects super easy. Hey everybody, Joe Workman here, and today I'm excited to show you how to use Font Pro to manage Google Fonts. Now, you may ask, what is Google Fonts? Well, Google's providing a great online service to serve up over 700 open source fonts to us completely free, right? So that is a lot of really great top quality fonts that we can leverage on our websites for free. Now, not all 700 fonts are equal, right? Designing a typeface is very complex, right? It has to do with, you know, letter spacing. And when these two letters are together, how is the kerning work, right? So not all fonts are created equal, right? So which fonts do we want to use in Google? Well, basically, do your research, right? Um, there's a lot of very smart people and great typographers out there that have analyzed the open source fonts on Google and told us basically, here, here's the best ones that we could do, right? And so we'll look at some of those and uh, dive into actually how we can um, easily use Google Fonts uh, web interface as well as then take that into Font Pro and implement these Google Fonts easily in our projects. So let's dive in. So here is a blog article on TypeWolf. And TypeWolf is a great resource if you wanna to subscribe to the blog and see all the great resources that are available on this website. There's a lot. But on this blog post uh, that I've linked to actually on the Font Pro website uh, is a list of the 30 best Google fonts to use, right? So he's taken through and he's gone through and analyzed all of the fonts on Google or probably most of them. And he's given his recommendation on what are the top 30 fonts that you should be using, um, you know, from Google. So this is a great resource. Make sure that you uh, check it out and um, take it to heart. So here we are on the Google Fonts website, simply google.com slash fonts. And when you first load the page, you'll notice that there are a ton of fonts that you can see, right? Now what's great is you can actually customize the sentence um, that is here. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. There we go, much better. So as you see here, we can see a whole bunch of fonts. The first one here is Open Sans and we have Roboto and Slab and Lotto and Oswald, right? So you see, you can just peruse these fonts and go all the way down, okay? You can also uh, sort by word. Right, so if you wanna see them maybe a little bit larger, kind of in a header sized font, right? This is another way of perusing these things. You can customize also the font size that's being used. And then you can also see paragraphs. So how is this font gonna look in paragraph form? Okay, there's also poster, which is kind of like the name of the font as a, you know, a large header as well, okay? Kind of similar to what we see here in the word uh, ability. So once we find a font that we like, let's say Roboto, okay? I can go ahead and um, go to the pop-out of this. And this allows us to maybe see the font a little bit more in depth. So in this font, we can see all the various font weights, the italic versions of the font, okay? And what's important here is that when you use a font, you do not get all of these weights and styles out of the box, okay? Each one of these is its own separate font file that gets downloaded. So if you wanna use normal 400 plus 500 plus 100, right? I mean, this is all three different font files that are gonna be loaded. So find the font that you want and choose the weights that you're going to need, and then you can utilize those. Now on stats, uh, you can see how many people are on the world are actually using this fonts, right? Um, and then also pairings is great. This gives you suggested pairings on other fonts that will complement this one. For example, I think Roboto would make a great uh, header font. So if I move a little bit further down, we can see what other fonts 
they're actually recommending to be used with Roboto. So you can really find a nice contrasting header and body text font. Now, what you'll also notice is if we search for Roboto on here, there are many different types of Roboto fonts. Okay, we have Roboto, Roboto Slab, Roboto Condensed, Roboto Mono. Okay, and these are all slightly different fonts, right? Now, just a quick little breakout, because you probably heard a lot of terms like sans serif font, serif font, monospace font. Like, what are all these things, right? So let's just go over a little bit, right? If you notice, a lot of fonts have like little, what are called serifs, little, you know, accents that come out from the letter, right? Such as the font that we're seeing, going to see right now is Roboto Slab. So Roboto Slab, if you see, has little serifs that come out from it. That means it is a serif font because it has little accents that come out from the back of the P's or the D's or the N's, right? They have like, you know, it's kind of like, um, some people might call it like a Roman character, right? Where they're, they're, they have like feet, right? Or, you know, accents that come out from the top and the sides, right? Those are serifs. So if you have a font that has these serifs, it is called a serif font. Now, a sans serif font means something that doesn't have a serif. So it is something like Helvetica, Helvetica New, right? Or, uh, you know, fonts that are just straight, right? And they're just cut off. There's no fancy foot feet on the letters, right? Um, they're very clean and modern. A lot of modern looking text and things like that uses a sans serif font because it's just straight, sleek, and modern. There's no serifs involved. So sans serif is not serif, right? Um, and then you might hear monospaced. Now, traditionally, a lot of quality fonts, right? Um, depending on the letter, okay, the width of the actual letter could be different, right? So an I and a W are gonna have much different spacing, the amount of space the letter is going to take up. However, a monospace font such as Courier, okay, that is a monospace font. And what that means is every single letter takes up the same amount of space, okay? So depending on your design, normally monospace space fonts aren't really used online, okay? But just want to make sure you knew what the terms were, and especially sans serif versus serif, right? Those are going to be big differences, especially when you define a fallback. Okay, so let's head back to uh, Google Fonts. So let's say I wanted to use Roboto Slab as a header font. I can go ahead and say add to collection. And let's say, let's find another font that we think might look good as a body text uh, with Roboto Slab as the header text. So let's go ahead and click the pop out and let's go over to pairings and we can quickly scroll down and we see Roboto condensed, right? Um, actually, this one's nice, Source Sans Pro. So we can go ahead and let's go ahead and, and add Source Sans Pro um, to our uh, font collection as well. Let's go ahead and search for Source Sans Pro. Uh, so here we have Source Code Pro, Source Sans Pro. Here we go. So let's go ahead and add that to my collection. Now at the bottom, you'll notice that I've added two fonts to my collection. And um, those are the, let's say those are the only two fonts that I'm really going to want. Let's go ahead and review um, these fonts. So I go ahead and at the bottom here, I click the review tab. And this brings up an interface where it allows me to review the fonts that I've chosen. So here it's saying, here's Roboto Slab as my headline font. Okay, and then you can change, maybe you want it thinner, right? Or, um, you know, normal, or maybe go a little bit bolder. Okay, let's keep it at 400. Okay, and then we could see here's my what Source Sans Pro looks like as a, a paragraph font. And then, you know, we can experiment with different weights over here. This is a great interface to kind of see how your fonts are going to look um, decent together. Now, if you look at the top, there's other things that we could do. We can go to styles and we can, you know, if we want to select more than one weight, we can do that. We can test drive this where it actually put in the content together. So we see exactly what a Roboto slab header is going to look like along with 
uh, the Source Sans Pro body text. So now that we've picked what fonts we want to use, let's go ahead and dive into Rapid Weaver and see how we can add these Google fonts to Font Pro. So here I have a sample page. It's just simple. It has a header and a paragraph and the font family stack at the top. Now, first off, let's go ahead and uh, add a Google font. And let's uh, categorize this for our headers. Okay, so this particular font family is gonna be for our headers. Now, the family name, remember we wanted to use Roboto Slab. Now this is a very, very important part of setting up your Google Fonts inside Font Pro. If we quickly zip back to the Google Fonts site, we have to ensure that the font family name that we enter into Rapid Weaver matches exactly with what is in Google Fonts. So here we have Roboto Slab with capital R space capital S. All of that matters. If you have a case wrong or you delete a space or you have an extra space, okay, it is very important that it be exact. So here we are back in our Google Fonts stack and we wanted to add Roboto Slab. Again, I added this exactly as it shows up in the Google Fonts uh, website. So next up in the Google Fonts setup is we're gonna wanna make sure that we define the actual font weight that we wanted to use. And if you remember earlier, we said we were gonna use 400, but if I wanted to use 700 or 800 or so on and so forth, I could choose the exact weight that I would, want, that I would like to use for this header. And then, We'll look at what bold italic and bold italic will do for us when we set up our paragraph texts, okay? Now, our fallback font, remember Roboto Slab is a serif font. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna set the fallback font to be a serif font. Next up, we wanna apply this font family to something. And for simplicity here, we're just gonna set up a vault. Okay, and what you know is when you set up a vault, there is a remove this little warning sign that shows up in your font family setup. This warning sign says, hey, this font family is not being applied to anything. So once you apply it to something, whether it be any of these apply to settings, that warning will be gone. But right now, I, like I said, we're gonna apply this to a vault. Let's apply it to vault number one. Now, next part is we wanna apply this font family to our header, right? So if I go to my header stack, this is my foundation header stack, I can go ahead and I've already set the font to be font vault one. Now, how do we make sure that this is working? What we can do is inside edit mode, um, there is a preview font button. And if you check that, you will notice that the actual headers for both the header as well as inside the Google font stack have changed so that the, you actually get to preview the font being used. Now, I don't recommend that for Google Fonts you leave this on because it will cause jumpiness inside edit mode. So just use it to make sure that your font is actually working and then you can quickly turn that back off. Now let's set up our paragraph. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another Google Font stack to the page. Uh, we're gonna change our label. It is for paragraphs, okay? And remember our font family is Source Sans Pro. And then we wanna make sure that uh, for normal, the normal font is gonna be 400 weight. And then we also wanna load, let's say for example, the bold font. I wanna make sure bold loads 700, which is the normal weight for a bold font. And then we also wanna bring in the italic and the bold italic. Now remember, as I told you earlier, every single weight and style that you add to the page of a particular font, we'll load a separate font file. So if we look at Google Fonts at Source Sans Pro, I wanted to load 400, 400 italic, 700, which is bold, and 700 italic. Now, what's great about this tool is that if you look at the little gauge here that Google provides, it kind of gives you a little hint in terms of how performant is this font on your website? So you see, as I checked more of these fonts, the little gauge here went from green up close to the warning, right? 
So make sure that you check these gauges in Google Fonts so you could potentially see how much a font is gonna add to your page weight. So now that we defined that we wanna load all four of our, our typefaces for the, sans, uh, for the Source Sans Pro font, let's go ahead and add that to vault number two, okay? And then of course, in my paragraph stack, this is a foundation paragraph stack, I have assigned the font to be font vault two, okay? So technically we're done, right? I've now imported my fonts from Google and I've applied them to a vault which I've then utilized inside of my uh, content stacks. Now, if we preview the page, we'll see all of our fonts are beautifully getting used. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth would I want to add italic or bold italic or even bold weight to my paragraph text or to my font families, okay? Because I'm loading now four different typefaces. So if we look at this particular paragraph here, you'll see that most of the paragraph is normal text. We then have this little um, section here that is italic, and then we have a bold section over here, and then we have a, a section of bold italic words as well. If I didn't load the italic font, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly turn off the italic font loading here. What you've probably noticed is the look of the text has changed. The reason for this is that what the browser is doing is it's taking our normal weight font and just skewing it a little bit to the side to make it look as if it's italic. This is what we call faux rendering, okay? And if you wanna ensure that your fonts are being rendered in the best possible, most sharp way possible, you wanna ensure that you're loading all of the typefaces required that you're gonna use. So if we head back and look at these Source Sans Pro files, something that you will notice, okay, if we look at the normal font and the normal italic font, just take a look at the characters. One thing that may or may not strike you is that the A is different in the italic font. The font designer for this particular font decided that this style of A potentially looked better in italic, as well as made the text when it's italic also stand out and look a little bit different than the normal weight font or the non-italic typeface. So here we are again with that same font and it's doing faux rendering. It's taking the normal typeface and just simply faux rendering it to look italic. But if we enable italics again, what you'll notice is it is now using the italic typeface for Source Sans Pro. And if we were to analyze the other differences, such as you know, faux rendering of bold fonts and faux rendering of bold italic fonts, the same thing will happen. If you want your text to be as crisp and clear as possible to read, and you're sure you're gonna use italic or you're sure you're gonna be using bold in your, in your content, ensure and make sure that you load the correct typefaces. So that does it for Google Fonts, right? We went over quite a bit in this video. And now I didn't go over every nook and cranny of the Google Fonts interface, right? Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with it, play around with it, become a little expert on it if you're gonna use it a lot, right? There's also some integration with an interesting service called Typecast that hopefully I'll do a video on in the future, okay? but. Google Fonts is a powerful tool that allows us access to hundreds of professional open source fonts. Now, again, be choosy about your fonts. Not all fonts are created equal. Now, as you see, Google Fonts is a great place to start with using online web fonts because it doesn't require that you really do much work other than learning the Google Fonts interface copying the font family name and pasting it into Font Pro. And Font Pro does all the rest of the work for you, okay? Now, remember the intricacies of loading what typeface, right? So choosing the exact font weights that you're gonna need, okay? Are you gonna need italic? Are you gonna need bold italic? If you wanna ensure that your typefaces load properly, you're gonna have to make sure that you do that. So I hope that you enjoy Google Fonts in Font Pro and use them to really make your websites pop with beautiful, crisp, sharp text. 
So thank you very much, everybody. Take care.